Welcome, welcome, one and all, to The Late Show. I'm your host, Stephen Colbert. It is a very... That feeling, <laughs> that sound, that sound right there. What is that sound? What is that sound? That's a Friday audience. That's a right Friday there. audience right there. <laughs> Except no substitutes. Oh, yeah. That's it. <laughs> no. You could take a core sample of this audience and count the layers of Friday in it. <laughs> uh, and listen, we know why everybody's so excited. Halloween is approaching, and that means one thing, Christmas. <laughs> if you're one of those people who starts their holiday shopping two months early, you're way too late. Because due to pandemic-related supply chain issues, experts say we could expect a shortage of toys, gifts, and decor this Christmas. So all we have this year is family, friends, and a celebration of the birth of the Christ child? <laughs> That's not the true meaning of Christmas. I want an air fryer. <laughs> they make things crisp with no oil. That's the real Christmas miracle. I'll tell you all about our abundance of shortages in tonight's Cargo Unchained Holiday Edition. Jingle bells, jingle bells, they're still the problem uh, this year is that almost everything we buy is made in Asia. And due to supply chain issues, the amount of time it takes for a popular gift to go from China to our store shelves is about 70 days. You can get it here quicker via Rudolph the Actual Reindeer. <laughs> and it's not just shipping. Thanks to COVID, factory closures in Vietnam are affecting brands from PacSun to Nike. So if you're getting your kids Nikes, plan ahead. And if you're getting your kids something from PacSun, they don't want that. <laughs> Shortages, so I hear. I am informed. <laughs> I am informed that that is the case. Shortages are also hitting the world's biggest toy brands, including Fisher Price, Tonka Trucks, Connects, and Care Bears. Also, toys like Snow Cone, the Happy Unicorn, and the popular LOL dolls. So while you can't get an LOL doll, they have introduced a line of leftovers from the factory floor, WTF dolls. <laughs> now, now, again, I'm informed. Maybe you're saying, that's fine, Steve. I'll give the gift of books. Well, think again, nerd. Because <laughs> due to a paper shortage, bookstores may not have the book you want this holiday, including mm. former President Barack Obama and Bruce Springsteen's collaboration, Renegades, Born in the USA. Well, that's too bad, because that's a good book. Well, at least I'll have plenty of copies of former President Jimmy Carter and John Bon Jovi's collaboration, Living on a Peanut Farm. <laughs> Whoa, I don't mean no harm. Whoa, living on a peanut farm. Uh, I think I need a key change. Yeah. I need a key you change. Went the key change. By the Halfway day through, <laughs> I went, I went. I didn't even know my own strength. Even if your gift makes it through the ports, they may have a hard time reaching it to your mailbox because due to changes over the last four years, experts are predicting mail delivery will be slower than in the 1970s. And the 70s mail delivery was so bad, I'm still waiting on my latest issue of Life magazine. <laughs> I can't wait to see pictures of Trish Nixon's wedding. <laughs> you know what has no trouble traveling all around the world in an instant? insane vaccine conspiracy theories. And I'll tell you all about the latest in tonight's edition of Disinformation Station. Forget horse paste, inject horse! Do not inject horse. <laughs> tonight's conductor of chaos is New Hampshire State Representative and ungodly Sam Waterston Newt Gingrich hybrid, <laughs> Ken Weiler. Weiler has stepped down from his leadership position after a backlash following a 52-page report on the COVID vaccine that he sent to his colleagues. Amongst the insanity, the report said that unknown octopus-like creatures are being injected into millions of children worldwide. Yeah, it's called Squid Game. <laughs> and it's fantastic. So I've been informed. It's too scary for me. According to Weiler's report, the vaccines are also a plot to steal our very own thoughts and feelings through 5G. Oh, you don't need to steal my thoughts. 
You can have this one for free. <laughs> what the f are you talking about? <laughs> the report also claims COVID deaths are a Vatican plot. Well, of course. The more people die, the more people go to heaven, then the Pope gets a kickback from God. Follow the manna. <laughs> Follow the manna. Speaking... <laughs> speaking of crazy people, uh, January 6th insurrectionists, and I'll tell you all about the latest in tonight's seditionist roundup roundup. Hey, I am utterly... Hold your horses, cow. I got this. These naysayers are mad they didn't win the election. Good one! <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. The case is... Getting longer every night. The cases for many of these idiotic maniacs are currently working their way through the court system. And an interesting trend has emerged because five of the Capitol riders are turning away defense lawyers and electing to represent themselves. <laughs> no, listen, they have a constitutional right to represent themselves, and we have a constitutional right to enjoy every stupid minute of it. <laughs> because... One of these dum-dums is former police officer and guy kicked out of the Harley-Davidson store for being a bit much. <laughs> Alan Hostetter. Fun fact, before storming the Capitol, Hostetter was a yoga instructor. Now he's going to namaste in jail. <laughs> Next up... Nothing? Nothing, Joe? Nothing? <laughs> Next... Come on. <laughs> I dished that one up. Next up, we've got Schenectady Man and Bully from every 90s teen movie, <laughs> Brandon Fellows. The judge warned Brandon that representing himself was a bad idea, but Fellows took the stand anyway and uh, proceeded to immediately admit to two new felonies. <laughs> Way to go, buddy. Good for you. Put it out there. <laughs> sir, sir, do you know why I pulled you over? Uh, no, but I know why you should have pulled me over. Here, <laughs> let me pop the trunk. Be careful, she's a biter. <laughs> Paints a picture. The next dingus in chains is January 6th rider Daryl Neely, who, in a video chat with friends, boasted that he had attacked a U.S. Capitol police officer and had taken the officer's U.S. CP jacket, badge, name tag, and baseball cap. No! One of the first rules of criming is that you have to resist the swag. That's why you never saw Danny Ocean rocking a Bellagio Vault Heist 2001 <laughs> T-shirt. 20... Can you believe that was 20 years ago? 20 years 20 ago. Years it ago. Like yesterday. He looks good. Last up in the Bonehead Brigade is a man named Landon Mitchell. Landon bragged to a friend that he was not too worried about being identified because he was masked up the whole time bragging that he was invincible. Apparently, Mitchell wore a camouflage mask and coat and is... I mean, told we have a photo. Jim? <laughs> no! <laughs> Jimmy, why are you showing me a photo of a floating red hat? Where's Mitchell? <laughs> Speaking of swine, surgeons in New York have successfully attached a kidney grown in a genetically altered pig to a human patient. After hearing the news, Charlotte changed some pig to... Ah! <laughs> now, don't get too excited. Don't get too excited, folks. You can't go out and get one of these pig's kidneys tomorrow. <laughs> this is experimental surgery. So experimental, in fact, that the New York Times headline reads, in a first, surgeons attached a pig kidney to a human, and it worked! <laughs> Why did the scientists sound so surprised? Do they just randomly attach animal parts to patients to see what sticks? He's got a broken arm, huh? Jam a deer hoof in there, see what happens. <laughs> Anything? No? Sew some baby ducks to his back. <laughs> I'm just throwing crap at the wall here. Ooh, there's an idea. <laughs> then again... <laughs> you're welcome. Then again... <laughs> scientists... Scientists are surprised all the time. I mean, Archimedes famously screamed, Eureka, when he discovered buoyancy. 
And who could forget Einstein's famous maxim, equals MC squared? Well, <laughs> me. <laughs> but he didn't know, he didn't expect uh -huh. that energy and mass would be the same thing. Who yeah. was all coming? But creating transplantable organs from pigs is a great medical advancement, and it explains what happened to this guy's genitals. <laughs> we got a great show for you tonight. My guest is Andy McDowell. When we come back, actual puppies in costumes. Stick around.